I'm Levi Betweiser, founder and film technician for The Rescued Film Project. The Rescued Film Project is an archive of images that we have rescued from rolls of film from all over the world. Basically, at some point, someone shot a roll of film, they wound it up, left it in their camera, or stuck it in a drawer, and forgot about it. 99% of the images in the Rescued Film Project archive come from unknown sources and unknown photographers. In fact, that is one of the requirements to have images in our archive. In order to accept rolls of film into our archive, the roll of film must be orphaned from its original photographer or be in such a state that it can't easily be processed. Currently, our archive contains over 30,000 images and they come to us from all over the world. I started the Rescued Film Project about four years ago. I was looking around in thrift stores and antique shops for old cameras to include my personal collection, but then I began noticing that many of the cameras still contained rolls of film. So I started purchasing these cameras, winding up the rolls of film, and storing them for a time in which I could process it. Once I got about 40 to 50 rolls, I processed my first batch, and I was completely amazed by how many of the rolls of film still had images on them. And that's where the Rescued Film Project started. I realized that if I could find thousands of images just from local stores in my area, there must be thousands more around the world that needed rescuing. Today, I still actively search for rolls of film myself. We also accept donations of film from people who follow the project. Oftentimes we get many rolls of film after a family member has passed away. Their sons and their daughters are cleaning out their homes and they find bags of film and they don't know what to do with them. Most people think that you can't get film processed anymore. Or they think if a roll of film is more than a couple years old, it's just no good. And that's just not the case. We've successfully processed film as old as the 1930s. But age is not a factor when it comes to the rolls of film we rescue. We process film from the 1930s all the way up to present day. Processing old rolls of film can pose its own challenges. Many of the types of film aren't manufactured anymore, and neither are their film chemistries. But we've developed a lot of techniques to help rescue these images anyway. But many of the rolls in our archive are faded, degraded, and have mold damage. But in our opinion, this just tells a greater story of what that roll of film has been through to get to us. A lot of people ask us, why do you even care? Why would you rescue all of these images that are seemingly unimportant? And the way we look at it is that every one of these pictures that someone shot was important to them in that moment. And while it may not hold importance to myself, it held importance for the person who shot it. It was a moment or a memory that they wanted to remember. And to us, it's a tragedy if those moments go unseen. The majority of the images in our archive are shot by amateur photographers just documenting their daily lives. And so by curating them into one collection, we're really showcasing our collective histories as human beings. Plus, there are just some really rad photos in the archive. We've got images from World War II, of President Dwight D. Eisenhower. We've got amazing tourist photos of Americans around the country. We've got so many birthday parties and cats and Halloween from all eras. I think people get lost at looking at the images in our archive for a couple reasons. And the first one is I think we all have a little bit of voyeurism in us. We like to have a glimpse into what other people's personal lives are like. The other reason people really love to dive into the Rescued Film Project archive is because they're trying to figure out what's going on. Since we have no information about almost any of the images in our project, people love to dive in and try and figure out what year a photo was shot, where it was shot, what's included in it. It's a way for people to become their own personal history detectives. After processing film into negatives, we scan them and we make digital images out of them. And then we safely store all the negatives. We create digital images instead of printing in the darkroom for a couple reasons. The first is that because so many of the negatives are degraded, it would be almost impossible to print them in the darkroom. Another reason we scan is because we don't want to be handling these negatives too many times. We really just want to scan them once, store them safely, so that they don't degrade anymore. The last reason we turn all these analog images into digital images is because we want to share them with the world to help us research them. The technology of photography has been progressing rapidly. It used to be that you could only take photos if you were a professional photographer with years of experience and thousands of dollars of equipment. Now with cell phones, photography is so readily available to us we almost take it for granted. And so preserving all these moments that are in such a fragile medium has really given me a greater appreciation for how we use images. I have no idea how many rolls of film I have processed at this point because so many of the rolls that we process actually come out completely blank and we don't track those. But currently we have several thousand rolls of film in our storage just waiting to be processed so we are nowhere near done with this project. But eventually we would love to have an online resource for people to view the entire library and lend their own research. So if you enjoy our Rescued Film Project, we really hope that you follow and support. You can find us on Instagram, Tumblr, Facebook, Etsy, Pinterest, pretty much anywhere imaginable. And to find out even more information about our project or to contact us directly, go to rescuedfilm.com.